Questions, questions, questions. 3D printing always brings a lot of questions when I talk to people and it gets brought up. Well, today I'm gonna to answer some of the common questions I get and hopefully it'll help you guys out. See you guys inside. Hey guys, so as I said in the intro, we're gonna talk about common questions that I get about 3D printing whenever it comes up in conversation or even just some of the comments or emails that I see on the channel a lot. So we're gonna go through just a couple, few questions and we're gonna kind of break them up and just kind of talk about them as we go through today. So I get asked about 3D printing, um, honestly, whenever it comes up in conversation, people even find out that I 3D print, not to mention what I see in feedback from the channel here. So 3D printing has been my hot, started as a hobby just about eight years ago and it sprung into, well, what we see today with the channel almost at 10,000 subscribers. Um, I do run Rise 3D Bills as a printing business um, it's small business, but you know, it, it helps pace the bills and I have a lot of enjoyment doing what I do here on the channel and also just teaching about 3d printing. Cause I mean, when you look at what 3d printing is, I mean, it's the next best thing to a replicator right now. Um, when you think about it with our technology. So, um, I have a lot of passion and fun when I look at this stuff and I do it and just when someone brings it up to me in conversation, it brings up a lot of passion, um, in me when I talk about it. So. Of course, I want to talk about it and have fun doing it. So today we're going to go through just a spattering of questions. Some people will get call outs for their questions. Some it's one I just hear all the time. So um, hopefully you find this video useful. If you do, you're new here, you're new to 3D printing, you're new to model building, hit that subscribe button, join us. We've got projects that we're working on, new products I talk about. And just honestly, sometimes when I run into a huge problem with 3D printing, I bring it out here on the channel and hopefully either you guys can help me find a solution or I help you find a solution that you're also having a problem with. So, um, let's dig in to those questions. So first question, <laughs> favorite place to find STL files. So this one is a loaded gun and a lot of times can be very kind of difficult. And this question comes from Malachi. So, where I even start looking for an STL when I need something, or if I'm looking for a piece to add to a bigger, larger project or something like that, I start at yegi.com. Now these will be listed down in the description as well. So um, don't fret if you didn't catch it. Yegi.com, Y-E-G-G-I.com is kind of a search engine for 3D prints or 3D files. And the cool thing about in that search functionality, you can actually check mark, I'm only looking for free or I'm looking for paid for files. And the cool thing about what Yegi does is it goes and looks at larger sites like Cults 3D, Thingiverse, Printables. Um, it goes out and it's, it's kind of like a Google for 3D prints. And it's a very good tool to help you find 3D prints and be able to look, hopefully find the stuff that you're looking for. So Yegi.com is one of my favorites, especially if I'm needing to pick between free or paid. Um, now one thing you can do with that too is, um, there are a lot of Patreons out there, people that create 3d files every month and you can go join their Patreons and get, you know, blah, 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 of files so many times. And yes, I'm a member of a few of them. Um, Wicked 3d is one of my favorites. Um, I also enjoy, um, oh, uh, uh, Kooten Sculpts is another one that I've that I subscribe to for that supplies really good files. Some of their files I want, sometimes they're not, just kind of depends on the month. Um, so it's kind of a loaded gun when you go that approach, but there can be perks that come along with the patrons, like the art, the uh, designer's permission to sell the print, um, different things like that between commercial, commercial licensing and um, personal use files. So that is one thing to kind of keep in mind when you're looking at that kind of different printing strategies. So um, hope that kind of helps. The Yegi.com is a great place to start. Most files on Thingiverse are free. If you go to Colts 3 d there is a check mark up at the top next to the search bar that you can check mark only show me free. Um, and there's just a lot of sites out there and there's a lot of scam collections out there too, which is unfortunate um, that we're finding that or just kind of pirated files and different things like that. But that, that's the name of the game anymore in the world. And even I've made mistakes um, where I thought I had uh, permission for the file and I didn't. Um, and you just try to work that out with the artist as best you can and 
kind of just move forward. Um, so kind of make sure you're, you're following the rules is what they have listed on the files as you go through your printing schemes. So great way to kind of look at it. Hopefully that helps out with finding files and also just looking at it. So the next question that I have, what is your favorite slicer? <laughs> this is a loaded gun as well, uh, but a really good question. So right now I have two preferred slicers. Um, if I'm doing FDM or filament printing, I'm going to use, I prefer, I'm actually really enjoying the Bamboo Lab slicer. Um, it does a really good job, has really good fix it tools. Um, I don't have to go, you know, bounce through five programs, go get mesh mixer and kind of do repairs. It's actually a really good program for kind of fixing and correcting files. It does a good job. Um, it also, the settings are really well set in the pre preset. Now, when I started, I started with Kira. I, I did the Kira thing and I love, I used Kira a long time. I used Prusa Slicer. I've used, uh, I've used so many slicers. It's not even funny. And when I found, when I first saw Bamboo Lab, the Bamboo Lab slicer, I was kind of like, oh, this kind of sucks. Um, but I kept with it and kind of learned it. And if you guys want me to do a video on the Bamboo Lab slicer, please let me know because support and infill on there can be kind of tricky. Um, but I've just found that slicer to work really well um, if your printer is supported. That's the kicker. Now, right now, everything I'm running from the Bamboo Labs, I have X1 Carbons, I got A1s. Um, I've got Neptune 3s that I slice files for in that program, including my, K my Creality K1 Max. So it supports a lot of printers now, which originally it didn't. So it is growing in that support, and it does a really nice job of slicing files. So for FDM printing, that's my preferred slicer. Resin printing, uh, I am very much Shintubox Pro. Um, I enjoy the software. It has good tools, and it has yet to let me down. And... Um, it's just very simple, very intuitive. I've tried the free version. Pro just gives you so much more um, that I don't mind spending the money for the license. Uh, I think it's 160 bucks a year for the license. And actually, I just re-upped, and I think I got it for 80 this year, which is really nice. Um, but I've been buying the license for a few years, so having that perk has been kind of good. Um, but Shintu Box has been kind of my preferred go-to uh, for resin printing. So hopefully that helps you guys out with that one. Let's move on to the next question. So my, the next question on the list is resin or FDM? <laughs> and this one, these are loaded questions. Um, so resin or FDM, it depends on what you're doing is the truth of it. If you're doing large cosplay, uh, armor pieces, stuff like that, you probably don't want to go the resin route. You probably want to go with the FDM route. Or if you're doing large, large projects, um, that don't require ultra sharp detail. Even though you can get really sharp detail out of an FDM print. Um, you want durability, you want speed, and you want to, honestly, in my opinion, a reduced cleanup, FDM is great. For beginners, if you're getting into 3D printing at all, FDM printing is great, especially with kids, because it's safe. It's just heat, uh, for the most part. Um, the PLA is relatively safe material. Just kind of keep it in a good ventilated space. PETG is a safe material. ABS, probably wouldn't want kids playing with ABS just because of the fumes. Um, but those base materials and enclosed printers that are available, like the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbons, P1Ps, or I think P2Ps, even the Creality K1s, K2s, are uh, really great machines and kind of changed the map of even kids 3D printing anymore. So FDM has its purposes. I'm a combined shop. I use both. If I can get away with an FDM print, I'm gonna do an FDM print because cleanup is usually a lot faster than a resin print. Um, but if I'm going for ultra sharp detail, miniatures, different things like that, busts of people's faces and high ultra sharp detail, I go with the resin printers. Um, now my shop currently, we've downsized. I'm down to 24 printers right now and over half of them are resin printers. Um, of various sizes. I've got everything from a six inch build plate to a 15 inch build plate. Um, and I use them pretty heavily now. Um, now that I'm kind of getting zeroed back in on my settings, change of materials, things are kind of moving really, really well. And we're going to talk about materials next. Um, 
of what, what's my preferred uh, brands. So I use both, but if we're talking about a kid getting into three, starting with your kids, different things like that, FDM is definitely the safer way to go, more compliant result, a lot more durable material. Uh, but if your kids are into D&D, stuff like that, you probably want to go to the resin printer, even an adult. Um, resin printers can be dangerous. Um, your resin, it's a very hazardous chemical to get on your hands. It can burn you, um, different things like that. Not to mention the cleaning process with denatured alcohol or isopropyl alcohol, depending on what you choose to use. So it's just a game of what feels good for you and what works well for you. So um, I always recommend starting out with an FDM print printer kind of learn the basics safer environment you don't have the heavy investment that you have with resin and kind of go from there so uh kind of really good question there so the next question and we've got two left after this one that i'm going to cover today and we can always do another video and if you guys got additional questions put them down in the comments down below so um what's my favorite materials very common question i get and if i'm doing fdm right now I very much enjoy the Bamboo Labs filament. Um, there's wide varieties, high yield colors, and a really good price. I used to be really big into inland filament, um, especially when I lived in St. Louis, Missouri. I had a micro center. I could just go down the street and get my filament at a really good price. Now that I have to have it shipped to me, price isn't so good anymore. Um, but And they, they went through a phase of quality issues. Um, where Bamboo Labs, they've been spot on. It, the AMS is, I pop it in there, it reads what I've got, and it, it prints what I'm after. So, and it works really well. Uh, preferred material that I use is PLA, um, but I am and have been using PETG HF a lot more um, for the strength and durability and just the color. It just looks, some of the colors I got, it just looks fantastic, guys. Um, I do use ABS from time to time. Um, I have to use those in specific printers because Bamboo Labs are not configured for that high heat. Um, so I have to use, um, usually if I'm using ABS, it's in one of my, um, one of my Neptune 3 Maxes. So that's my preferred material for filament. For resin, the Ceratec resin, um, tough resin. I have had fantastic results with it. Multiple different brands of machines, all the way from the Illigoo Saturn 4s to the frozen uh, 8KSs, the resin just works. And it comes out beautiful and it's strong because it's ABS, it's tough, and it holds together really well. It can stand up to the kiddos <laughs> um, beating on the figures or I get a really good look um, at some of the prints, which uh, I think I'm gonna be painting a RoboCop bust here. So you guys will get a really good look at that. I, used, I did use the frozen material uh, frozen standard resin. I'm still using it um, until I use up the supplies that I have in the shop. Um, unfortunately for that one, costs have just driven up so high on their 8K resin that uh, I, I had to make a switch. And um, I'm just getting better results with the Zero Tech right now. It's doing really well for me and I'm just going to keep running with that. So links to those materials are in the descriptions down below as well. So keep that in mind. So now to the final question of today. What's your favorite printer? <laughs> uh, so I'm going to be fair here. Every printer has its quality and has its purpose. And identifying those purposes and getting your printer set up the way you need them to set up and how you use them is all that really matters. So let's talk FDM. So large printers. I have three Neptune 3 Maxes that just are beasts at printing for me and printing large. I'm talking like full chest plates, massive Starship models. Um, it's just my kind of go-to printer for big stuff. Um, my Creata K1 Max is my midline. 300, 310 by 310 build plate can do most pretty good sized jobs and it does it really, really quick. Problem with the Neptune 3s is they're a bit slower. The K1 Max is quick. My main production FDF line is three X1 Carbons from Bamboo Labs. Um, those guys, they're fast, they're clean, they're efficient, and with the AMSs, I get four to 16 different colors per machine, depending on how many AMSs I hook up. So um, those are kind of my really, my heavy duty go-to 
Um, now the H2D from Bamboo Labs has been released. I'm hoping to get one eventually because it has that big 310 build plate to kind of rival the X1 uh, K1 Max. So kind of hoping maybe one day I can afford that. If you guys go join the membership, you know, we can possibly get one of those in here because those funds go to um, those machines and showing them off in the print in the print shop. So that's my FDM. Um, my X1 Carbons are my baby. They, they're fast, they're efficient, and they do a really good job. So um, they've very much replaced my old CR10s. Um, I used to run four of those consistently. Um, but just for the speed and quality, the K1 car X1 Carbons have just been fantastic. So those are kind of my go-tos for FDM. Now for resin, right now, my primary resin machines are Saturn IV Ultras. I've got three of them running. I've got also Iligu Mars 5 Ultras. I've got two of them running in the shop. Those are my main line standard print stuff. My big boys, Frozen's Mega 8KSs are actually kind of winning. I've got three of those running in my shop right now. And with the Seartech resin, mwah, they're working fantastic. I also have two Mega 8Ks. The Mega 8K compared to the S is slower, um, but they can still achieve the job just as good as the S's. It just takes a little longer. And so really I'm running five of those 15 inch build plate machines in my print shop. Um, the, set, the, the Saturn IV Ultras, a lot of people have had problems with them, but on, and I had one I ruined, um, unfortunately, but I've got three of them and I run them consistently a lot. <laughs> um, they're really well built um, and they do a good job once you understand how the machine works. And I've done a video unboxing. I don't think I've done the follow-up video. I really need to do that on the Ultra Fours, but they're really good machines. Um, I've still got Sat a Saturn S in the shop that just prints barrels and terrain pieces. Um, that's, that's that guy's job. So I've had any cubic machines in the shop and they do okay. Weren't my favorite. Um, had some mechanical issues with a lot of them, but they're still good machines too. So, but right now, Illigoo is kind of, Illigoo and Bamboo Labs are dominating my shop, which is really nice. It used to be almost exclusively a Creality shop, but as time and progress, as machines have progressed, I found just for cost and for function, um, the Bamboo Labs, while expensive, their functionality is fantastic, and the Illigoo machines just kick butt. Um, and they have consistently over the years. So hopefully this information kind of helped you guys out with the common questions. Again, if you've got questions, put them down in the description down below, in the comments down below. Um, links to some of the stuff I talked about are in the description. And also, I appreciate you guys. Make sure you hit that sub button, hit that like button, or honestly, even if you hit the, down, the dislike button, it still helps me out. Uh, um, leave that feedback. And if you're just here and you don't have any questions or comments, just hit hi down in the description down, in the comments down below it helps us out. So thank you guys. If you are, if you're not a member, please consider joining, becoming a member that revenue goes to buying cool things so we can uh, show them here on the channel, do these awesome projects that I need to get back to like the fan home uh, enterprise D build. And uh, we've got a couple uh, other things coming. So Lots of work going on, so appreciate you guys, and we'll see you in the next video.